how can the vaccine industry prepare for future pandemics? How would you prepare? I think, you know, instead of reinventing the wheel every time with a new technology to deal with a disease, the way that Oxford did it and others have done it, rely on proven technology platforms, both, and I'll tell you what the advantages with that is. Scaling up and manufacturing, you already know how to do that. So that's a big plus. You don't have to waste months figuring that part out, which is also a challenge, let me tell you. And partly that's why, you know, the Oxford candidate was very easy for us to scale up. It was a known technology on cells and things that we, we were familiar with doing. The second advantage, of course, is safety. If you establish, I'll give you a simple example on this chimp adenovirus, you know, on safety, the next spike protein that we could use on this, like we did with Ebola or Oxford did with Ebola, makes it so much easier from the safety profile and concerns from regulators and the public to go forward. So that's what I would advise, stick to what you know. And in a pandemic, you always have, simplicity is the key. If you're talking about finding new devices and ways and technology, you're always going to run into challenges for storage, for manufacturing, for safety, regulation, all of that. So you want to be as simple and traditional as possible so that your time to respond rapidly in a pandemic is reduced as much as possible. That's the lesson I've learned at least, and I think everybody is seeing that now going forward, so we'll be better prepared for the future. Is that the reason why the messenger RNA vaccines are far more expensive because they're more difficult to produce? Because I believe they're much faster. You can't say we can't experiment with new things because you know we know how to do it the old way. Because you have to come up with new technology and use it to develop vaccines. So I think they're probably cheaper to produce, um, but I I really don't want to comment on it without looking at the process. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, after you reach a few hundred million doses. Um, you know, the economies of scale completely supersede the, 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 the technology variant. So, you know, if you make a few hundred million doses of a vaccine, um, it won't really matter whether you do it on this platform or another. It's when you're looking at, you know, 20, 30 million doses, 50 million doses, that kind of scale, that's when, you know, the technology will play a role in your costing. Um, the messenger RNA vaccines are just expensive because the big pharma have higher costs and they've chosen to keep the pricing high as they do normally for most products. Um, so uh, uh, that's that's how it is. Word. Sorry? I said use the word, it's profiteering. Well, I don't know. That's too strong a word. I think, of course, profits are always good because you need that. Um, uh, of course, profiteering is bad. And I don't think the big pharma are trying to profiteer at this stage, and I hope not at least. Um, I think initially, before they also know their costing, they've given a price. I'm sure that as the volumes pick up, they also will come down on their price because nobody wants to um, uh, be profiteering or at least even be seen profiteering during a pandemic.